The most promising opportunity to emerge has been the accelerated momentum to develop our huge natural gas reserves. It is fortunate that the legislature created the Alaska Gas Line Development Corporation in 2010 and that the late Dan Fowski skillfully put the organizational structure together. I am frequently asked how the joint development agreement we signed on November 9th in Beijing between Alaska and China is different from prior agreements. Let me briefly explain. First, Alaska, at the request of the producers, has taken the lead in the gas line project. And for the first time in the project's history, we are working directly with the LNG markets. Second, China's participants in the LNG project are among the largest companies and energy consumers in the world. They include the world's largest integrated oil and gas company, the world's fourth largest bank, and the world's second largest sovereign wealth fund. Third, China has long been Alaska's largest trade partner. With its 1.4 billion population, China wants Alaska's clean burning gas. And fourth, the Alaska LNG project has the full support of the President of the United States and the full support of the President of China. Both leaders now have a vested interest in its success. At the federal level, AGDC has been granted tax exempt status, which significantly improves the project economics. The White House has also granted fast track status to the project to help expedite review and permitting. Nothing on Alaska's horizon has greater potential to fuel and propel our prosperity than this opportunity. Jobs, low cost energy for Alaskan homes and businesses, clean air, and a healthy economy all across the state are what's at stake. And a strong project labor agreement, Alaskans will be first in line to go to work on a gas line. Since that signing, I have held critical meetings here in Juneau with the CEOs of three of the North Slope producers. We had productive, in-depth discussions on securing gas supply and on the mutual benefits of this project for their companies and for Alaska. The companies are engaged, and those high-level talks are continuing. I know what this project will do for Alaskans, especially young Alaskans. I, I, experienced, I experienced something similar in the 1970s. I remember standing outside the laborer's 341 dispatch trailer in Johnson Trailer Court in Valdez to re receive a dispatch ticket to unload and stack pipe coming from Japan to build the pipeline. Now, while I can't remember the name of the person who handed me my law school diploma, I will always remember Jim Robinson, the laborer's business agent who gave me that dispatch ticket. That first dispatch opened a world of opportunity for me. This led to further dispatches as a 1281 journeyman carpenter that helped me pay for my college, my first home, my first business, and law school. A project like the Alaska LNG project does not come together overnight, and there is much work to be done. But together, we are proving that when, when Alaskans take the lead, Alaskans get the job done. It is time that we, as Alaskans, define our future, rather than hope somebody else defines it for us. We must have a thriving economy and an education system that can support the type of jobs and investment needed to improve our quality of life, one that provides opportunities for all Alaskans, today's generations, and tomorrow's. Being such a majestic and resource-rich state, we have much more op options than most. We are welcoming a record-breaking number of tourists, and our winter tourism continues to grow. We have world-class fisheries and are now promoting new opportunities, such as kelp and shellfish production. And we will continue 
to prioritize healthy salmon habitats that benefit all users. Alaska's large retailers are expanding efforts to market Alaska-grown agricultural products. This has prompted some farmers to significantly expand their production. We have an unlimited opportunity to meet the in-state demand for livestock and produce. With agriculture, I often say, we don't need to look for the market, we are the market. Mining, mining provides 8,600 high paying jobs in Alaska and injects hundreds of millions of dollars into the state's economy through rents and royalties. New projects at Donilon, Live and Good, Upper Kobuk, and in Haines could add millions of dollars in new revenue and great job, greater job opportunities for Alaskans. A bright spot in our forest products is our ongoing effort to collective work collaboratively with all stakeholders to promote a viable and sustainable industry. This includes the recent use of the Good Neighbor Authority, allowing the state to partner with the U.S. Forest Service to complete work on national forest lands. It cannot be overstated that energy, mineral, and timber development depends on access to our natural resources. Federal restrictions to access in Southeast via the 2001 Roadless Rule has harmed our ability to develop our resources. Alaskans are the best positioned to determine responsible development. Today, my administration filed a petition with the U.S. Department of Agriculture to undertake a rulemaking process to restore the roadless rule exemption to the region. Over the past three years, our state corporation, ADA, has invested over $425 million in Alaska businesses and projects. ADA has leveraged over a billion dollars in private investment and supported the creation or retention of over 3,200 permanent private sector jobs and over 3,000 construction jobs. You know, every, almost every time I visited the late Governor Wally Hickel's office, he would show me on his globe how Asia with this close proximity to Alaska, is where our unlimited opportunities lie and how right he was. We are assembling a multi-industry trade mission to Asia this year to advance other opportunities with our largest trade partners. We are also working to begin direct flights from Asia to Alaska. This will help us attract more of the 100 plus million Asian vacationers each year to further enhance our extraordinary tourism industry. Alaska is open for business, and we want the world to know it. In our efforts to create a safer, smarter, stronger Alaska, we are restoring confidence in our institutions, demanding accountability, and rebuilding the public trust. Government itself is now more efficient. While maintaining most public services, State spending, including capital spending, is down by 40%, and the number of state employees has dropped by nearly 3,000. We have closed over 40 state facilities and significantly reduced or eliminated state funding in more than 100 programs and services. Public trust has been restored in our National Guard. Alaska's National Guard is now a beacon of honor and continues to deploy for wartime missions and disaster relief to defend and protect our nation. Major General Lori Hummel and her team have assumed a leadership role in the development Arctic Defense Doctrine. We are also working not just to be, preserve Alaska's current military force structure, but to grow that structure. I've heard from many of you that it doesn't matter whether you live in Muldoon or Minto, there is no meaningful future without feeling safe and secure. Last October, Attorney General John Alindamu, working with the Department of Public Safety, Department of Corrections, Department of Health and Social Services, launched a 68-point public safety action plan. 
The plan increases efficiencies and partners with local and federal law enforcement to attack crime head on. My budget. My budget for FY 2019 is in support of that plan and add $34 million for public safety. We must have the resources required to keep Alaskans safe and secure. A major focus of the Public Safety Action Plan is to stem the tide of illegal drugs by increasing prosecution of traffickers and holding them accountable with greater penalties. The opioid crisis has devastated so many families and communities. On February 14th of last year, I issued a declaration of emergency and established an incident command structure to coordinate responses. This has proven extremely effective way to marshal available resources and we're already seeing results. One example is the increased use of drug dogs. In 2017 alone, our three canine teams have confiscated thousands of grams, hundreds of thousands of dollars in drug currency. One of our drug dogs, Mocha, is featured in an ad at the SeaTac airport. Beneath Mocha's smiling photo, it warns, if you're bringing drugs to Alaska, I look forward to meeting you. <laughs> Controlling our destiny depends upon our children receiving an excellent education that prepares them for good jobs, college, rewarding careers, and for life. The Department of Education Early Development, working with the State Board of Education, has just completed a year-long statewide outreach effort to develop practical approaches to improving our education system. Parents, teachers, school districts, legislators, as well as other interested citizens united around three commitments which will drive meaningful changes in the coming months and years. Building on the many instances of educational success in our state, we will work together to increase student success, cultivate safety and well-being, and support responsible, reflective learning. An, edu an excellent education system also requires a strong university system. Faced with unprecedented budget challenges, the University of Alaska has made drastic cuts. But under the capable leadership of the University of Alaska Board of Regents and administration, the university continues to produce well-prepared graduates and excellent programs. We are strengthening relationships among our own people, particularly with Alaska's tribes and native peoples. In years past, our governments did not work well together and resorted to litigation. But today, we are identifying barriers and developing policy to build a foundation of respect and collaboration. The Governor's Tribal Advisory Council and our new willingness to join forces for the good of Alaska have already yielded strong results. The historic compact between the Office of Children's Services and tribes to benefit our children in foster care is one example of a giant leap forward. We will continue to find opportunities to work together, heal the divide, and celebrate the rich history and the contributions of Alaska's first people. Securing our future must also include addressing the fact that Alaska is at ground zero